Good morning, everybody. Happy Monday, the 22nd of January. We are, well, I am, back to a normal computer, four wonderful monitors, no more little laptop, and yes, back to normal. No more dragging things on and off the screen for you. And hopefully it looks a little bigger, prettier, makes more sense. Um, yeah. Okay. Let's kind of get right into it because we have Snowmageddon 2018 finally here in South Dakota. Usually this time of year it is um, far too cold here to actually get snow, but now it is warm enough for snow to develop, and so we have a blizzard outside. We cannot see... <laughs> um, I can only see about a block right now, a city block, a little under that. I got up at 5 o'clock this morning, and I almost wanted to take a picture because there was nothing outside. But then um, went back upstairs at 6.30 and uh, say good morning to my wife, and uh, it was blowing a lot. And then right before I came on, <clears throat> my wife called down to me, ran upstairs, and she said, I'm not going out in this. <laughs> And it's and we live in town, which I mean, a town in South Dakota is still pretty much living in the country. But uh, I mean, she is only about six blocks from the hospital that she's at. She's a she's a psychologist. Um, but I'm going to drive her there because I've got the pickup warmed up. And um, so she'll wait like an hour or a half hour, depending on how long we spend together, which is fine. OK, anyways, enough personal anecdotes. Let's look at our ideas from last Friday. We were looking at a short on gold at the 1333 area. Oh, you know what? I wanted to adjust something here because now I can be back on camera. Move that prettiness up there. Okay. I'm back with you. Hi. All right. So, oh yes, again, on the Forex portal, let me go over that. Uh, whoops. So on the portal, on the portal, make sure that I've got the, pull this up quick. Well, on the portal, um, if you look on the uh, videos, the library, you'll see the setup for my charts. Um, I'm going to kind of go over one other thing today as we go through these to kind of help maybe uh, uh, I'm going to show you something you may be familiar with. If you're not familiar with it, I think it's a great, it's an indicator, but it's also a trading system. And I think I, you know, I actually really... I was reminded of it by uh, another colleague. Uh, I really wasn't reminded of it. I, I, I know it very well. I actually use it, parts of it. But uh, um, to do. Where are you? Oh, there you are. Okay. We'll get to this in a second. Okay. So the Euro trade that we had. Uh, on Friday, it was a short at 13.33 with a stop at 13.38.8, um, which is up here. And 13.33, you know, we're still in that area. Um, we have a lot of stuff going on uh, fundamentally that is kind of causing a uh, a little bit of a kind of different attitude in how our markets are reacting today. And that's the government shutdown in the US. Um, so what does the government shutdown mean? Well, we have learned that the longer it goes on, the less it seems to matter. <laughs> uh, some things get a little slower, uh, but for the most part, the essential things that government needs to run 
are are still running. The non-essentials are not, which I guess begs the question is, what's the purpose then? Why are they there? Not to get political. It's just like trading, you get picky about your money. And if you're not picky about your money, if things, if you don't nitpick about where your money goes, then uh, you're not going to last in trading. So you, as a byproduct, you naturally become kind of a, uh, a fiscal hawk. So anyways, looking at gold, that trade would still be active. Um, you know, it wasn't a really trade we wanted to get in on over the weekend. Uh, there's just not a whole lot of activity. We did kind of gap up at the at the open yesterday um, on the 21st. Where are we at? Did we or did we gap down on gold? No, we gapped up and then we just kind of traded down. Uh, we are still this trend line break here we want to watch out for. So we actually could adjust our stop lower, but uh, you know, this angle is still being respected as a area of resistance. And we should not expect a lot of movement today until we hear some more kind of uh, updates on um, how the uh, how the government shutdown is going to um, play out. So we'll see. If they get an agreement, God knows how this is going to play out. So right now, kind of with those unforeseen things going on, unless there's a really obvious kind of setup and move forming, I don't really like to uh, have a position. You know, the gold trade, we may have a nice little little uh, quick long scalp opportunity uh, with a break above the 1334. If you're already short and you're waiting, cool. Uh, you know, if I was short, I, I don't trade this pair, but if I was short already, I you know, I just let it ride out. Uh, that's how you should trade is you 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 have your stop set and just leave it or um or don't have a stop i frequently trade without stops i you know i don't um i think that they are prone to get hit more often than not but i do put kind of a long-term insurance one you know 200 300 pips away I'm comfortable with that. Euro. That is a lot for most people. I understand. It's a lot of people. A lot, a lot of pip stop for most most everybody. I'm just probably a little weird. The euro trade. Uh, we had the euro short at 122.26. Uh, if we were going to break down farther, we did gap up at the open yesterday at uh, four o'clock central. We did gap up quite a bit moved and we just kind of sold off and we came back down to the lows of that area, traded back up to the value area again. And now we're trading a little bit back down. Um, again, not a lot of, of uh, uh, activity here to look at. We should still see some downward uh, pressure because we are right here we are at this resistance arc so we may want to wait to see what happens if we this is this is a key area right here where i'm looking at this is on the 25th that we would see some type of if price gets this far if we stay in this range um we will either have an explosive move up and out or an explosive move down and below so we'll want to see a little bit longer to see how price reacts to this for the time being if we get a lot of activity today after we're done we're going to want to look at a trade that is going to break below the 45 so you know what why don't we use this chart and my style of analysis to complement something that might be easier for everybody to implement. The Ichimoku system. You are probably familiar with it. You've probably heard me rail against moving averages and how moving average systems don't work. However, the Ichimoku system is not just a moving average system. 
it is i'm not going to get through the i'm not gonna, there, there's a lot of t- other terms for how the uh, uh uh the names of these different indicators but the uh, uh, you know, the, the cloud, the Kumo, the Kinjinsen, the Tenkinsen, uh, those are all names you don't need to know. They're really not important. To, you know, what is important is to understand how this system works. This is an indicator that is a trading system or vice versa. It's pretty much standard in any charting software, but the most, it really, arguably the most important thing you want to look at is this cloud. Now, all this is, is the price action moved forward a certain number of, of uh, time periods. So if you see this green area here, that's just what this was. All right. You can see that the cloud um, mimics what's behind it. Okay. Now, the cloud is really nothing more than these are moving averages. Okay. These are lines. And then it just fills in a green space. Okay. So if we were to put these on here, that's what they would look like. But I like to not have those lines on there. I just like to see the cloud because that's what's most important to me. Now, how can you find this? You just go to your indicators and type in itchy. Uh, whoops. Not itchy, itchy. Itchy Moku cloud. Click that and put it on your screen. All right. And what the default look is going to look like something like this it looks like a lot of stuff going on and it, and it kind of is but let's let's break this down by looking over here the you have two lines all right you have your your uh, conversion line which is this this green line here let me just so the conversion line is the is the faster moving average, all right? And then you have your baseline, which is your slower moving average. Just a second, folks. Just want to make sure if I get an emergency call on something I have, I can see it and hear it. All right. And so essentially, the, the idea is, is that when the conversion line crosses the baseline, which is the slower moving average, then you, you have a long bias. You know, you want to go long once that crosses. All right. And then there is, you know what, I'm going to, I'm going to amend this a little bit and say, don't use those. <laughs> don't use those that's not important to know what's happening the only one other one that i would recommend using is the lagging span i like this one the lagging span is is really what's uh, kind of most important now the lagging span is like the cloud except it's backwards it's it's thrust back so so where we have the price action here thrust forward the lagging span is is thrust back and so the Ichimoku system, it's, it's really a great representation. Ichimoku means, uh, 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 translated, uh, means a look at the market at a glance or at a glance. I, I, I'm not sure what the total real term is, but um, I know it means that it's looking at the market at a glance. It's a really quick way to look at and see how is the market performing related to the past and how is it uh, reacting currently. Um, so the behavior of the Ichimoku system is that when price breaks above the cloud, if it's trading above the cloud, that means we only want to take long trades. When price breaks below the cloud, we only want to take, um, we only want to take short trades. Now you could do that every time price breaks above and closes above the cloud here, right? These blobs. But what you really want to do, what you really want to do is you want to wait for the lagging span, that black line here. I think it's colored orange. You know what? Let me bring this to uh, uh, I re 
reset settings as default, but I just want to make this thing be default so I don't confuse everybody with what I have going on. Well, that's not the default colors either because I've got a whole bunch of them on here. Anyways, <laughs> you'll get it. Um, I think the conversion line is maybe orange by default, but you know that's not really overly important. So we have we really want to go long now when um, we have the lagging span breaking out and above the cloud. Did that happen? Sure. Did it play out? No. What about over here? So so essentially what we're saying is is that when price is in the cloud and when the lagging span is in the cloud, no trades. There's no trades. We are in a squeeze. We could put Bollinger Bands on here and it would tell us that we're in a squeeze or we're entering a squeeze or that we are in one or we're ready to break out of one. I don't know how sensitive this can be on here. Sure, yeah. Tight range of squeeze, false breakout back into range. Um, yep. Now, this is an hourly chart, all right? I like to see multiple time periods. I like to see, not on the hourly, <clears throat> this is the four-hour cloud, all right? And then I like to see the eight-hour as well. And here's our eight-hour cloud. So right now on these longer time frames, price is still trading above the eight and the four hour cloud. But on the hourly, we are into kind of a consolidative area. So we could very well see price continue in a consolidation before it wants to move up or down. Doesn't have to. As you can see that when price, when it, when it gets, these are, these are the things you wanna see. When you see price enter consolidation on all these time periods and then you see a breakout happen, especially when you start to see the one hour cloud moving above the four and the eight, then you can start to have a really nice bias and move to the top side. And you supplement that with your, your oscillators. So just like I have a one hour, a four hour and an eight hour um, uh, cloud system up here, I also have a one hour, four hour, and an eight hour uh, composite index. And again, for those of you who have not been here, the composite index, you just type in Constance Brown. It's this one right here and put it on your screen. And how? so how do you get like a one hour or a four hour of this? This is really easy. You go to format, inputs, and take every value of this multiplied by four. Because we're on a four hour, we're on a one hour chart. We want to see a four hour represent representation of that. And you do the same with the Ichimoku cloud, with the Ichimoku system. See all these values are just this right here is the base. This is the default settings. Then this is the Ichimoku default settings, but all the values are multiplied by four, and this one's multiplied by eight. All right, and I think I even have. Yeah, did I do a 20, like a daily one probably too? Sometimes I just like to look at that. Yeah. All right. So looking at this, this, this is really telling us what's happening. So we are in a consolidative phase. And what's going on with our oscillators? We're, we're, we're confirmed that this is a kind of a dead market right now. There's nothing going on in the euro. How does that look to over here using other things? You know, we're going to probably more than likely ping pong around here. Okay. There, we may not see a lot of movement. So I'm not putting in a trade on this. I'm only wanting to go long. If we have, and I think these settings are really easy for everybody to set up. I only really want to go long. If we have a break above the, um, where are we at here? Oh, you know what? I also want to see. On my. Oops. Yeah, you're still waiting. 
we're coming up with the end of the time period here and all that jazz, so, okay. So I really want to go long at a break above this resistance arc and a hold above it, or a break below the 45 and a break and a hold below it, which is really kind of coinciding along with what we're looking at in the itchy Moku cloud. So 123.03. Yeah, why don't we say conservatively break and hold above? The O one twenty three two. And we wanna say, you know, one twenty two oh two. Uh, we probably want to wait a little longer for that one, but I mean, eh, it might create structure there. Yeah, I want to wait a little lower. 121.69. Well, we'll say 121.8. All right, so that's that's the Euro trade. Again, really muted action until we heart start hearing some more stuff about the um, uh, the, the uh, Shut down budget issue, then we'll we'll see we'll you know we'll have more of an idea what's going on. Euro pound. Oh, finally. Oh man, finally. We're getting some nice moving action. The the last trade we had on the Euro pound was on last on the sixteenth, was it? Yeah, last week. And that was on, we wanted to go long if we got up to, oh yeah, that trade worked out. We didn't have any trades because we were kind of stuck in that zone up here. So we have some pretty healthy movement down. Looking at our oscillators on the hourly. Well, let's go look at it on the itchy. Good long opportunity based on the Ichimoku system. All right, we are we are we are below the eight. We're below the four here, but we're we're still kind of within this value area. So we could get a pull. We should we should want to get back short on a pullback to the really the one eighty eight uh, ten area. All right, we would like to see a pullback here to go short again because we are below the hourly, the four hour, and the eight hour clouds. So that's good. That is a very good sign. And we're, you know, we have supportive selling conditions based on these oscillators. You know, the, the hourly is the only one where we may have missed the boat a little bit. So we want to, um, you know, and we have a clear break with our lagging span there. So that's good. That's a good uh, trade over there. The other trade we had on, um, we had UJ, we were looking at on Friday. Now this guy is certainly coiling up for move. We've entered a consolidative phase again. That's fairly normal. Um, you know, we're 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 gonna want to wait to see for the lagging span to break above the cloud which which won't happen for a while yet and that may not happen until we enter the um the uh we want to break and hold basically of the 111 area okay or we're going to be looking to short on a return to 110.40. How does that look on our other analysis here? <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's pretty good. That 110.40 actually coincides with that would be a break of this angle. Um, you know, we had a convergence of these trend lines here and at this level, so it's odd that we didn't get a more 
you know, active response, but we are holding on this harmonic level here pretty nicely. Uh, again, we have this this, uh, uh, this angle has acted really nicely as support so far. Um, so we'll, we'll, but up here we have, we're gonna see some tight range trading here, it looks like based on our GAN square. All right, then let's see, we have, <laughs> we have the New Zealand, the megaly overextended New Zealand. I am comfortable shorting here. I believe we actually had a short at this area last Friday. Um, short at 72, 78, or 732, which we actually are in that area again. So, I mean, that's fine with me. At 73, yeah, 73, one. And we'll see what happens if we can get back down to this trend line. It has been acting as support, but um, you know we're just really, if we look at an eight-hour chart, you know we're we're really divergent on this. <laughs> we are really heavily divergent on these on this pair. Um, we had this break. We you know we have a brand new timeline here, so so this time cycle. So we we our stop is pretty tight. Our stop is above. The, the 7343 zone above this trend line, um, but this is a very steep move, and it's it's near parabolic. So, and a parabolic move is is when you have you know pretty steep angle trend line, but then another one starts. Okay, and then we have as we keep going up, we keep increasing in angles. So this is looking increasingly parabolic on this move. And when we get to this zone right here, this is generally because we're in a brand new square in time and price and momentum, we generally will see reversals off this area. So this is the best setup I've seen so far in all the pairs for having a short bias. Uh, we are very, um, uh, uh, it always goops up when you go back out longer, but uh, we have a very good bias for short momentum. If it doesn't pan out, if, if short momentum does not pan out and we move higher, then we can assume that we're going to have some monstrous bullish bias continuing. Okay. That this was just a, 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 a kind of a culmination. Um, but uh, we, we should see, I was just kind of like counting this out, like we had a one, two, three, four, five movement. We should see a three-step corrective, three-wave corrective move if we're going to, you know, like use Elliott. Again, I'm not the biggest proponent of using Elliott stuff, but um, we do have a lot of extended um, extended areas here. And uh, yeah, we'll see. We'll have to see what happens uh, with this. On this longer time frame, you know, we, we could see that we may have a cup and handle formation. So we could see that three step down only to come back up to test this area and shoot up higher. But for right now, I am short and I really only want to get long if uh, we uh, really break this high up here. That's what I'm looking for. Otherwise, I'm short. It's it's, it's a very extended. Uh, let's see what the others. We had we also had the Aussie dollar looking at a short as well. Actually, let's go back to the Itchy Muku system and look at um, so New Zealand dollar. Yeah, see how we're very extended. You know, we're not we're not really extended, or you know, we're slightly or actually on the eight hour. We're actually considered to be in a buying territory but on the one and the the uh, uh the uh the uh, eight hour we have um we have uh sorry one of the four hour, we have these uh developing overbought conditions
and we have um, we have what's <clears throat> we have what's called oh that didn't show up did it when I typed that in there huh okay well uh, right and right here we have some hidden divergence hidden bearish divergence and so what that means is that we have these higher highs in our oscillator see that but where are these peaks at oops higher highs in our oscillator but we have lower highs in price so a hidden divergence says that that this is going to move to the downside um but on the eight hour, it's still looking fairly bullish for a move. We'll have to see, though. This could have been, you know, like when prices move up a lot or down a lot and they enter consolidation, that can just be a distribution phase and then for further accumulation or just a consolidation period before the next move up. So we could be in this. But again, uh, because we're in such a um, a uh, uh, a tight, tight, um, elevated areas, I don't... Uh, I do not have a long bias here at all yet. I'm actually waiting. Give me one moment. All right. Now, so again, we're above the cloud. So we really, what we want to do is we want to wait. I mean, I'm 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 already short this morning actually below here uh, but if you want to wait until we get higher to see if this breaks up more or if we want to see if our lagging span is going to come back down so we are above the cloud um, we have not closed a full candlestick above the cloud yet we want to see a bullish candlestick form above the cloud, and then we can we can start to have a continued bullish bias. But for the time being, um, this is still pretty uh, a tight range. Even if we zoom into the five minute, it's not a very it's not a very authentic looking move. It's it's very um, I don't know what the word is meh. <laughs> But that's just been our move since midnight has been a pretty much straight up move. And you can see a pretty good example of, of um, you know, on the five minute chart. So this is like a five minute cloud with a, uh, a 20 minute cloud and then a, um, a 35 minute cloud. Right. Yeah. 35 minute cloud. So just keep an eye on that pair. Any kind of extended further weakness. We should see a nice move down there. The other pair we looked at was the Aussie dollar and where are you at on here there we are that that had a nice short setup around here we're looking at uh, seeing if this angle up here is going to get touched and if it'll hold it again it is a very very uh, uh, elevated direction we are in severely <laughs> On uh, the daily, we are we are way up here in the. We're actually, yeah, we're in the 80s. Yeah, this is a this is a monster overbought um, zone. And even if we bring it we'll bring it down to the eight hour chart, yep, really overbought. Four hours overbought. Yep. So the best shorting opportunities are when we get higher. So the 80, 60 zone on the, also every day we go farther on here and we move up, we should, we should kind of be happy about that because at the end of this week on the 31st, that's actually next Wednesday, but as we get closer to the weekend and then into next week, if we continue to see higher prices, that is awesome um, because we are getting into uh, February 4th is actually a big reversal date in GANs. 
time cycles. So there's a lot of important tops and bottoms found on February 4th. We very well could see the very important tops in a lot of these pairs. And um, we should uh, be very responsive to those time cycles because they are very sensitive. Um, I'm a GAN style trader, so I value uh, time and momentum levels as the most important. Um, the price action and the behavior of the price action isn't uh, as much of a issue with me. It's the time cycles are what's more important. All right. So well, we have one more. Oh, the pound dollar. Pound dollar, similar situation. We're going to see a lot of this weakness in all these dollar pairs because of the of the uh, uh, the budget stuff going on. So, uh, you know, don't expect again, treat these days like like uh, holidays. So if whatever direction things are moving, expect them to continue in that direction. Um, but you can bet your butt that. If something comes out where they've reached a deal, the bias is towards some strength for the dollar uh, because, um, you know, people just don't like a lot of uncertainty with the U.S. economy. You can see the DXY has uh, had kind of its own um, nasty move here. Yeah, it's just kind of dipped down quite a bit we're still sitting at that level but we haven't really it's not even really a historical support level is it no it broke that it's at 90 45 uh, maybe hmm. all right so enough about the forex pairs just not a lot of great stuff to go after which is unfortunate um Yeah, get a little toppy there. Bring it back down to the one hour chart. Yeah, looking a little top heavy there almost. Yeah, we'll have to see. Okay, uh, cryptos. All right. Yeah, that's what we want to see here. We really want to see some. Uh, push down further we want to get to test the the uh, 9,000 8,000 area again uh, preferably to confirm a, a double bottom all right uh, that would be the most ideal scenario we uh, you know I love these resistance arcs they they, they are so very very um, um, uh, honest uh, when time, when, when price, this is acting as a, as a support arc for, you know, basic price action, but for how we're looking at this movement in time, this is a resistance arc. So, um, we should see price bounce off of these lines, the arc, the, the top part band and the lower band, we should see price want to be resisted going lower there, which we have seen. But once it breaks through, it is pretty it is pretty swift, which we do observe. And so um, to get back into this, we're going to have to have some equal pressure to move up and out. So we we did have, you know, you can you can kind of I don't know how you want to view this, but but uh, um Uh, where are we at here? Uh, there we go. Okay, I'll go to Bitcoin. Wait a minute, that is not it. Here we go. Okay, so what do we got going on here? Break below the the Ichimoku cloud on the hourly, and a hold below it. Uh, so you can you can see that when we broke below with the lagging span, uh, you know, I, although we can't short it, you know, we can see the behavior of it that 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 reacted very nicely at these levels. And we're on the uh, the uh, the four hour cloud. That's the yellow cloud here. 
we are below that. So that's a pretty bearish move we've got coming up, but we're still kind of, you know, the eight hour, we're still really kind of within that value area. We're not, um, we're not, we're just kind of poking below it a little bit. What we have below us is the, the 10,000 area and we have a supportive arc here. If we break this angle, we should expect some swift, swift, swift uh, uh, sell-off. Um, and I'm thinking towards the 5,000 level. I mean, it, it could really go that low, which would be sweet. <laughs> I'm, I really want to... I, the difference between um, experienced sellers and and inexperienced sellers is how they react to to these kind of moves. Um, long term, huge bullish bias on Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies in general. Just just not not concerned about the market at all. Uh, will it get hit by some? words about this government regulating this this government regulating that even the u.s sure but this is more of like an investment than a but it is also super speculative and it's fun to trade so it, it with that mindset these lower moves and these lower prices are fantastic i i really look forward to them i really like them a lot um and we should we should really look forward to cheaper prices to get into things um so you know if we're doing a little elliot stuff here let me break this out of here just looking at the one hour we have like a one two three four and the fifth move down we should see um yeah, down to 8,000 would be perfectly appropriate. And a longer term, Elliot Bidness, we have like a, a one, two, and ah, no, that wouldn't work. We say one, two, three, four, five. Yeah. I think I did that right. Again, not, not the biggest Elliot fanatic. Uh, Elliot really doesn't tell you where things are going to go, but it can tell you how far a leg may go. That, that's really, Gan tells you where things will go, but um, Elliot kind of tells you how far or how much a move will go. Um, you know, looking at this, the itchy system with our uh, uh, oscillators, we are in great buying conditions again. On the eight hour, the four and the one row, both of those are side moving averages. Leave, let's even look at the daily. Yeah, we're we're in great buying conditions on a eight day, four day, and the one day we're just kind of floating around in there, not doing much. So we do have a good bias. Once we get to here, this is on the 29th. At, um, that is the 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 uh, uh, end of the the month coming up. On the fourth, we have a major um gandate there is a new moon cycle on the 31st so that's later on in that wednesday and you know we just have a lot of fantastic uh culminations of time price and momentum here which is going to be just a it's like a jack-in-the-box getting ready to pop um so just be very careful and be aware of that um Again, this is the one day itchy cloud. So we just broke below it, got stopped right on the cloud. That's not a, it's not a mistake. Stopped right on the cloud, stopped right on a pivot. Want, didn't want to go above this angle. Um, we, uh, but, but uh, the key here is that this um, lagging span on the daily is not below this cloud yet. I mean, really what we may very well see is that we have some range trading in here again before we before we burst up. But we do, we do have a lot of supportive areas in Bitcoin right here. Uh, just be aware of that. Um, you know, the other pairs, that it's really just the same story. Different look, though. Ooh, nice breakdown of Ethereum at those levels. Break below the 45. May want to test this area again. 
But we may be at the fourth leg here of this move. So we have like a one, two, three, four, and we'll get lower here again. I really don't count these uh, waterfall moves as indicative of an honest one. Um, but we it, it does appear we are either ending the if we if we don't end our down move soon in these major pairs in like ethereum and bitcoin and litecoin and i call the major pairs the ones that are traded on coinbase the ones that you can convert into fiat cash if we do not get a whole lot of supportive buying at these levels we are going to flush we're going to flush 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 a long ways down and um you know that is not bad options expire chicago mercantile exchange options expire this week um so again if you want to think about this <laughs> uh the shorting component of these instruments is a little shady but the futures market i trade i, I do trade futures i don't trade bitcoin futures um, really no interest in in that um i'll trade equity futures like at the open um like a little bit here uh or before I, I, but i didn't do any today i'm not going to do any today either uh anyways so bitcoin futures so if options expire at the end of the week then and and everybody is wanting to go short on bitcoin futures then that means that as we get closer to the end of the week um people are going to want to cover they're going to close out those shorts or they're closing you know they're, they're going to and um they want may want to uh, uh uh change their bias at the end of that uh, expiration um, and not just get those shorts covered but uh also buy back in long that would cause a, a big rise a, a big jump so we should expect to see lower prices and all of these um it's not uh out of the question that that kind of this kind of these kind of moves should be uh we should look forward to these kind of moves because you know if you if you miss the moves down here you're going to get them again and i really do believe that the 9000 to 8000 area because it's option expiry and then we'll get our double bottom and we'll we're getting close to these these bullish conditions in time as well um we really do want price to come down we don't want it to consolidate higher or consolidate neutral. We do want price to come down. That would be that would be a very good sign. If you already have positions open, I mean, yeah, sure, it looks like it hurts, but uh, you don't lose money until you actually sell. So <laughs> um, I have positions open that I've bought all over the place. I mean, farther, farther, farther back before in 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 you know like September through June, I had buying, but um, you know, I've had buying at pullbacks here as well even though this has been a a short-term correction so far we should look forward to further prices and again bitcoin has lost 80 percent of its value five different times in its history all right five different times bitcoin has lost 80 percent of its value so bitcoin going from twenty thousand ish all the way down to two thousand one thousand totally normal totally normal I know that sounds a little wild, but normal is relative, and that is normal for Bitcoin. <laughs> and so we should actually look forward to getting into moves like that. If we get if we get a big nosedive and a dump at those levels, fantastic. Enjoy it. Also, but 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 again, when we are looking at these kind of um, uh, when we're looking at Bitcoin and we're looking at this kind of market, you know, it is highly speculative. It is highly volatile. It could just go away at some point. So you really only want to put money in that you're okay losing. <laughs> uh, really, any trade, even in Forex, I assume that the money that I put in is gone already. All right. I, I want to make sure that I am comfortable with that money disappearing. All right, I'm comfortable with the amount of risk I've taken and that I won't be able to get it back. If you have already determined that the money you're risking is gone and already out of your account, then you don't have to be afraid of it disappearing. You just have to you just have to be okay with saying, I'm okay risking $100 here. I'm okay to 
put $100 and, and let it disappear to see if I can make $300 or $200 or if I can make $50 on my $100. If you have determined that that money is, is gone already before – you know, you have decided that that's what you're gonna you're, you're gonna risk, and you're okay losing before you even put the trade on. You 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 really have started to succeed at the market, because I, I preach this a lot that that you know 90% of this career is mental. It's how you're reacting to the the dollar value or your account value going down. You know, it's it's amazing how many times. Uh, people, and I'm including myself in this because I, I made this mistake frequently, is, is, is I've, I've determined to have a certain bias. I've determined to have a trade set up, and I, I go to do it, and I've spent so long analyzing, and, and, and I know that um, the probabilities are in my favor, and I put in the trade, and then it goes against me, and I decide to get out, only to see in a couple of days that I would have I would have been fine. So... You are your own worst enemy, <laughs> and uh, uh, you just have to um, just have to try to avoid uh, uh, causing yourself losses all the time by by being comfortable with losing. All right, be comfortable with the risk you're taking, and that assume that that money's gone already, and then it won't bother you. Okay, kind of went a little longer today than usual. Let's just do a little quick kind of run over our, um, uh, where's, there we go. Let's, let's look at these uh, currency pairs again. The the dollar yen, kind of not doing much there. The Aussie, or sorry, gold dollar, right at that, that um, trend line here. Seeing what happens, don't have a trade on it. The euro. Still stuck around there. The uh, uh, the euro pound. We want it to do a little pullback so we can go back short again. Looks like that did happen. That's nice. The pound dollar very extended. The Aussie. Oh wait, oh, here we are. New Zealand dollar. That's extended. We were short. That's that's playing out uh, so far. And same with probably I would imagine. Yep, Aussie dollar's got the same thing going for it. Okay. So. Um, we have hidden bearish divergence on, on here as well. On the Aussie dollar, we have, on the hourly, we have higher highs in our oscillator, but on these peaks, but we have lower highs on our major peaks on um, on, uh, on uh, price. Also, ooh, I do not like these. I keep saying that I do not like these because I think it's like chasing straights, but... Scenario could play out. New Zealand dollar probably has similar structure, sort of. <laughs> but um, yeah, not really though. We'll see though. We will see. Anyways, those are the trades. You know, uh, trade trade. Um, this was a short from last week too, I think, right? Yeah, we were short at eighty-eight seven on this. And we kind of re have returned back to that area. It's still a good short. The Aussie dollar yen. Aussie yen pair. All right. Anyways, I'm babbling. Uh, cool. So we have some trade opportunities. Uh, we have some important areas that things are sitting at. Again, we have uh, uh, no deal on, uh, on, the, on the U.S. government. Uh, we're still on the shutdown phase. So... You know, be careful of your trading today, especially if you are going to be long uh, pairs that are against the dollar, because the the odds are that if something comes out where they've reached a deal, then that's going to be bullish on the dollar and bearish for the other pairs, at least in the short term. So just be very uh, uh, cautious with your trading today. And um, yeah, you know, I think we're going to have a really fun week, uh, you know. I'm looking forward to this week. It should be pretty exciting. Uh, I'm glad to be back to South Dakota and out of the woods of Michigan, even though I do miss my in-laws. Uh, but uh, <clears throat> yeah, you know, trade smart, trade safe, and uh, don't don't trade uh, afraid or or hopeful. And we will see you all tomorrow morning. Bye bye.